So in this video, we will check out an old AP exam problem from way back in 2006. Uh, it appeared in form B that year, and it was only on the AP exam. But it's a differential equations question, uh, and it had to do with a slope field, and then it had kind of a second part in the middle, and then a, a separable differential equation at the end, which is something that is pretty typical of a lot of free response set, the separable differential equations piece. Uh, but we'll get through it bit by bit here. In part A, they ask us to use the axes that are here to sketch a slope field for the differential equation at the nine points that are indicated. So the way that you compute a, the way that you build a slope field is you pick an ordered pair. So I started up here at 1, 1. Uh, I put 1 in for x, I put 1 in for y, and then I evaluated. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0 times cosine of pi. That's going to give me an answer of 0. And I just had to draw a line segment with a slope of 0 at that ordered pair. I then drop down to this ordered pair, 1, 0. When I put 0 in for y, and I put 1 in for x, and evaluated, what I ended up getting was I ended up getting negative 1. So I just had to try to draw a line segment with a slope of negative 1 at that location. You just repeat that process over and over again for all nine of the ordered pairs that you're asked to draw the line segments at. And I'll kind of scroll down so you can see the entire table there. And then all you do once you have the slope of the tangent line to your solution curve at any ordered pair that you've thrown into the derivative is you draw a line segment with that slope at that spot. Kind of clunky to build these by hand, but something that the, the AP exam used to ask you to do hasn't happened a lot recently, probably just because it is difficult to grade, a little time consuming, but uh, that's how you'd build a slope field by hand. In part B, it says there's a horizontal line with equation y equals c that satisfies the differential equation. What is this value of c? So here's what I thought whenever I, I read that. If this is the solution to the differential equation, the slope of this horizontal line is going to be zero, right? The slope of a horizontal line is zero. So then I had to try to figure out what value of C, right? And it's, it's a Y value that's equal to C. What value of C makes the derivative have a constant value of zero, no matter what the value of X is. And if you think about that for a few seconds, it's, it's a pretty obvious answer. If we put one in place of this Y, one minus one is zero. Square it stays as zero, no matter what this is. Your derivative has a value of zero, and so y equals one is a solution to this differential equation that satisfies the stipulation that it's a horizontal line. Uh, even if we look at our slope field, look at y equals one. y equals one fits right into that slope field. So you can kind of verify that a second way by referring back to what we did in part A. But the main part of this that we want to discuss is part C. Uh, part C is definitely quite a bit lengthier than parts A or B. They ask us to find the particular solution y equals f of x to the differential equation with the initial condition f of 1 equals 0. So when we solve a differential equation in calc AB, we're going to rely on the method of separation of variables. So to separate the variables, I multiplied the right side of the equation by dx. I simultaneously divided the dy that was on the left side of the equation by this quantity, and I had my variables successfully separated. The way that you undo these differentials is you take an antiderivative on both sides. The antiderivative on each side of this is actually kind of tricky because over here you do have an inner function, y minus 1, being squared within that denominator. Over here, you do have an inner function, pi x, inside that cosine function. So I applied two separate u substitutions, one for the expression on the left and one for the antiderivative on the right. Uh, whenever I let u equal what was inside this set of parentheses here, uh, the derivative of u with respect to y ended up being 1. And then du ended up just equaling dy when I solved this equation here for dy to figure out what I was going to put in place of the dy that's in that numerator. Uh, I subscripted these u's just to kind of show that the u's over here are different than the u's over here. Um, on the other side here, I did a substitution u equals pi x. Well, the derivative of a number times x is just the number, and in this case, the number is pi. And then what is going to go in place of the dx? Well, if I multiply the right side of this equation by dx and divide the left side by pi, this is the expression I'm going to be putting in place of dx. I made those substitutions, right? So I had 1 over u squared on the side containing the y's. 
uh, on the side containing the x's, I ended up with cosine of u with respect to u, and then this factor of pi snuck into the denominator there. So if we went ahead and did the antiderivative, I, I do have a factor of pi that pops up in the antiderivative on the right. Uh, I do have to keep that factor of pi in the denominator since that's how that constant snuck in. And the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. I back substitute pi x in place of this u, and I've got my antiderivative on the right. And that is the side I added the constant of integration to because that is the side that we're going to eventually place everything onto in just a minute or two. On the left side, I looked at this and I thought, well, this is really u to the negative second, right? 1 over u squared is really u to the negative second. So if I add 1 to negative 2, I get negative 1. And if I divide by negative 1, I, I just have that ended up being negative. Uh, so this really is negative 1 divided by u to the first. If I back substitute y minus 1 in place of the u, I end up with this. So this is an implicit form of the general solution. We do need to recognize that because the way this is stated, y equals f of x is the solution we're going for, we do need to solve this equation for y. And so there's some algebra that we're going to do on another screen that we definitely need to account for. Uh, also, it asks for a particular solution, not a general. So this is a general solution because we don't know what the value of c is just yet. So we're going to have to apply this condition to figure out what that value of c actually is. So on a new screen, we've got the general solution from the bottom of the prior screen, copy and pasted onto this one. Um, you can do these steps in either order. It's, it's something that I kind of adjust on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm going to have to find out what my constant value for C is, but I'm also going to have to figure out what my solution y equals f of x is. So I'm going to have to solve for C and I'm going to have to solve for y. You can do those in either order that you prefer. In this case, I chose to figure out what my constant was first because it was pretty easy to put 1 in place of this x, and that just ended up giving me sine of pi. And I was going to simultaneously be putting 0 in place of the y on the other side. And so this division ended up being positive 1. Sine of pi is actually 0. You can use the unit circle to determine that. And so this side of the equation just ended up being positive c. This side just ended up being positive 1. So that gave us our value for c. So then I copied my solution over here with the value that we just found for C, plugged in for C. And now I need to figure out how I'm going to solve this for Y. I, I chose to do something that you wouldn't necessarily have to do on the AP exam since it's going to give you credit for unsimplified answers. But what I my personal preference in this situation is if I'm going to try to solve this for Y, I'm going to have to get y out of this denominator. And the easiest way to get y out of the denominator is to multiply both sides of the equation by y. Uh, but I also noticed I have a fraction over here already. And I don't necessarily want to have an answer that's a fraction within a fraction. So the first thing that I did is I actually multiplied both sides of this equation by pi. And that gave me a, a negative 1 times pi within this numerator. Multiplying this factor right here by multiplying this term right here by pi canceled this factor of 1 over pi. So I just have a coefficient of 1 in front of sine of pi x now. But the thing you have to do if you're choosing to do the step like I did, this whole entire side of the equation has to get multiplied by pi. So that second term, that 1, has to be multiplied by pi as well. So now that I don't have a fraction over here, I'm going to multiply the right side of the equation by y minus 1. Uh, that gives me this mess that I already have on the right side of the equation times the quantity y minus 1. Well, if I want to get rid of this great big quantity, just divide the negative pi that's on the left side of the equation by that quantity. And then to finish it off, all we have to do is we have to add 1 to both sides. And so pretty lengthy. Uh, solving separable differential equations is something that you have to do in most AP exams. Uh, so it's definitely something that's, that's good to think about and, and talk through, and, and that's part C.